deck slides that we are doing for the week of April 6th through the 10th. This one is called, do 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 do, come on up. Okay, this one is called Goldfish. <laughs> That's it, just Goldfish. Um, this is done by the artist, his name is Henry Matisse. This is done in 1912 oil on canvas and he is part of a movement of this time again all these particular pieces that we're going to be seeing in the 20th century are going to be in various types of movements so we just want to make sure we have all the classifications and we can um, describe all the characteristics between each of them uh, so the particular movement for this one is called fauvism okay it's kind of a funny word he was basically matisse was a founder of this french movement and again it's um, pronounced Fauvism, and how you spell that is F-A-U-V-I-S-M. And what you can put for a definition for that, it's inspired by um, impressionistic express, expressionistic use of bold color. Um, and some examples of other artists, uh, you could classify also Van Gogh um, and Gauguin were uh, also artists that used this uh, use of bold color. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the color scheme that Matisse is using very shortly. So Goldfish, this particular painting, it belongs to a series that Matisse produced um, between the spring and summer of 1912, but this specific one focuses on the fish. So basically what this whole theme for this particular piece is, it's aiming for a painting to calm and soothe the viewer. Um, and we'll get into talking a little bit about more um, context, um, how Matisse is going to achieve that. So, so just get a little bit of background information. We got to talk about goldfish for a minute. Maybe you even owned a goldfish when you were little, or maybe you still have one. Um, this is actually something that's kind of actually therapeutic, not just for fish in general, but if you've ever stared like at a fish tank, you actually can um, start to just have your blood pressure go down you can start to kind of calm down um, it's actually used um, for people who might have like really high blood pressure might have anxiety issues um, that they have the use of some sort of like a fish tank and just even hearing the noise running and seeing the fish just be you know hanging out in the fish tank just kind of floating around um, there's actually some qualities to it that that can be in a positive aspect so um, not to get off too much, but so the subject of this is goldfish and goldfish were introduced to Europe from West Asia um, in the 17th century. And actually, Matisse, like one of our other artists that we have studied recently, Gauguin, um, he visited um, a place called Tanger. Um, it's in Morocco in 1912. And what he noticed from his trip when he went there is people would look and look at fish bowls and observe them for hours. Okay, so like this contemplative, this um, used to be um, used to soothe um, and calm viewers. This is what he noticed when he was in Morocco. Um, he really admired the Moroccan lifestyle, just relaxed and contem contemplative. Um, and goldfish can symbolize that tranquil state of mind um, and the evocative of a lost paradise, often portrayed in art. So um, goldfish... Uh, tend to actually be a symbol for that when we're looking at at artworks that focus on um, emphasizing fish in particular. So a focus on the paradise of theme. So when I say that paradise, hopefully that might take you back to a concept that we've talked about um, in West, oh, in, in Islam, excuse me. In, I was going to say West Asia, but it was in Islam. So for this piece, um, Matisse was very much influenced by um, Islamic culture, and he was very familiar with their type of art. And if you remember when we were studying the Islam um, courtyards, and we would talk about the use of water, um, and how that would be symbolized as tranquil, or we would talk about some of the gardens, um, specifically that were like in the Taj Mahal. Um, or just the vegetation that we would see, that horror of Okoy, um, just use of 
um, completely covering the space um, and that vegetal design, um, we're seeing some of those types of concepts, those types of characteristics come back in this particular piece. So um, looking at those symbols as being um, very much beautiful and divine and creation, and again, it's this overall concept of connecting with this idea of paradise. Okay, so again, the goldfish, they define the theme as ideal inhabitants um, of this particular paradise, this particular golden age. Um, some of the characteristics, if you can just write down or make sure you have in your notes, is the use of complementary colors. So right away, if you look at this particular scene, um, you can see the use of orange being focused on the goldfish and the use of green. Um, and if you were to look at a color wheel, you would notice that um, green and orange kind of red um, along the lines of red um, are complementary colors. So this is a perfect example of the use of a complementary color scheme. Um, and the, again, this quest, again, for characteristics, number two, you can put for the idyllic paradise. And idyllic means happy, peaceful, picturesque paradise okay um, appeal to be contemplative and relaxation for the viewer now these goldfish of course are not moving they're just painted but looking at it long enough you could probably get a sense of the same kind of tranquil um, when you look at a fish tank um, and then again just looking at with this it's showing a lot of tension and, and I think where, where they're getting this particular use of the word tension is just there's a lot going on in this particular scene. It's not just the goldfish sitting in this bowl, but we see the use of plants, use of vegetation. We get this little bit of a, a skewed perspective in the way that we see them placed in this bowl and this cylindrical bowl, glass cylindrical bowl that you can see clearly through it, um, and then how it's sitting on the table. Because perspective-wise, you know I'd be all about telling you about how this is not drawn correctly, how you can see from this particular viewpoint, you should not be able to see this entire table in itself. And the way that it's tilted is not matching the way that the um, cylinder is, is tilted as well. Um, so that's it for characteristics, use of complementary colors, the ideal, this quest for peaceful, picturesque paradise, um, the appeal for contemplative relax relaxation for the viewer and complex construction of pictorial space. Um, again, the going back to the color, using bright orange for the contrast of the goldfish um, with the subtle greens and pinks around um, the bowl itself. So again, that use of complementary color schemes is really important. And furthermore, going back to that, that's part of a technique used by the Fauvisms. So again, the use of being um, of a brighter color scheme. And I just wanted to show you another piece by Matisse. And again, looking at the colors, just specifically, just look at the colors and the use of how bright they are. And when you put bright colors next to other bright colors, how they get even more vibrant when you're looking at it. So um, just to kind of show you another example of that use of the bright color schemes. Again, this is under that Favis movement. Okay, um, looking at my notes, what else? Again, he's inspired by these really intense colors, um, the use of light and space. Um, and excuse me, just going back to Van Gogh and Cezanne in particular, and even Gauguin, I think I mentioned mentioned him earlier, but um, he's really influenced by Gauguin. Um, and again, going back to his use of color schemes, those bold, bright colors, and the fact that he visited Tahiti. And here we have um, our, our artist going to Morocco and studying that particular lifestyle and paying attention to some of the characteristics that the people um, have have shown. Um, where this is painted and where and why this is important important to know is this is in the location of his actual home. Um, he lives near Paris and he's depicting his own plants, his garden, his furniture, and his actual fish tank. Um, so he's painting this in he has like a garden conservatory, and it makes a point to say that it's also surrounded by glass. So in a way, in a sense, these little goldfish are in a glass bowl, and then when you're in this glass conservatory space, you're also maybe in a sense encompassed in a in a fishbowl in itself. So again, some of the techniques, just to wrap this one up, he's using tension created in space. And again, I think that's being evoked by just how much is going on in this. We not only see goldfish 
Um, and it's interesting also if you can, if you haven't noticed, but you see them from the side view and then you also see them from the top view. And if you notice the difference between the two views is you can clearly see that they're fish from the side view, but on top it just looks like some paint strokes of some orange and some reddish color blotches that are on top to maybe give that um, illusion, oh, those are the goldfish from above. Um, so you can see two different angles. Um, and then we were talking about earlier the table, how it's definitely tilted upwards. Um, and just this kind of juxtaposition of the various viewpoints that we're seeing and the spatial amb ambiguity that we're, um, again, seeing being dis distinguished. Um, how we can see multiple perspectives um, from the uh, viewer. Um, and again, he's going back to, for that, um, looking at Cezanne and some of his specific still lifes um, and studying um, how he's playing with perspective as well. Um, and then the use of color and pattern also hold everything together. So the use of like the patterns in the rails, patterns in like the lilies and in the flowers, um, the lilies down below. Um, we're just seeing those use of repetition of the same same thing being painted over and over again um, and then the color itself being super important being very uh, bright and vibrant and contrasting with each other as far as complementary colors are concerned okay that's gonna wrap us up for goldfish